Hello, it's Simon Suchi here. And in this short video, I wanna share with you my property market update for 2023. In particular, I wanna focus on the interest rate crisis that we have right now, and the impact it's gonna have on your property investing. So listen carefully, this is very topical information. And by the way, I really encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell icon because I often release very topical videos and you wanna get that information as soon as it comes out so you can take action on it. And if you like this video, please press the like and if you've got any questions or comments, please paste below and I'll answer as many as I possibly can. So what's happening in the market right now? Well, the biggest thing, obviously we know, the Bank of England has raised their base rate to 4%. That's the highest it's been for about the last 14 years. So what does this mean? Well, anybody who has a variable rate mortgage, which can be homeowners or maybe property investors, suddenly they're financed in the last year or so, the cost of their mortgage might have tripled in some cases. In fact, some property owners, some investors are going to be paying more in mortgage than they're getting in rental income. And some homeowners are really going to struggle to pay their mortgages. So those two groups of people might be thinking about selling their property to get out of this cash flow negative situation they find themselves in. Now, remember, if people have a fixed rate mortgage, they're not affected at the moment by these interest rate rises. But when it comes to the end of that mortgage discounted period, then they might have a problem. And about 25% of properties in the UK are unencumbered. That means there's no mortgage at all, so that they are not affected by these interest rate rises. However, this interest rate crisis is a big problem for many long-term landlords. And let me explain why. So prior to the financial crisis of 2007 that led to the global property market crash. In the UK, we saw property prices crash on average 20 to 30%. One of the things that we need to know, before that time, the Bank of England base rate was about 5%. So when someone came to the end of a discounted period on their mortgage, because when you take out a mortgage, you can get a, a two, three, or five-year period, you might get a discount, the rate is fixed. And at the end of that, it goes to the standard variable rate. Now, the standard variable rate is normally the Bank of England base rate plus a few percent. So in other words, prior to the credit crunch, when people finish their discounted mortgages at maybe three or four percent, the standard variable rate might have been five or six or seven percent. So most people remortgage. However, when the global financial crisis came and the property market crashed, the Bank of England interest rate came down to half a percent. And it was half a percent for the best part of a decade. What that meant, many people who took out mortgages before the credit crunch, they were on a fixed period for a certain amount of time. Then when it came to the end of that period, instead of the standard variable rate being a higher interest rate, it was actually a lower interest rate because the Bank of England base rate was half a percent plus maybe one and a half or two percent meant that their realistic pay rate on their mortgage was between two and three percent. And that was lower than they could remortgage onto a new mortgage at the time. So for this reason, many, many landlords, probably hundreds of thousands of landlords, left their mortgages on variable rates because they were getting amazing cash flow, even on single let properties for the last decade. Now, when Section 24 was introduced in April 2017, that changed things slightly. It was phased in over four years. And basically, Section 24, as I'm sure you know, was legislation brought in to change the way that we as property investors are taxed. It always used to be the best way to have property in your own name. However, Section 24 meant that if you had property in your own name and you had a mortgage, which most investors do, and if you are a higher rate taxpayer, which many property investors are, then you'd pay a lot more tax on your property income. Now, with low interest rates, it wasn't so much of a problem. Yes, people were paying tax, but they were still making good profit from their rental properties. However, that started to change in early 2022 when the Bank of England base rate started to go up. So instead of people paying 2 to 3%, because the Bank of England base rate is now up at 4%, some of those people might be paying as much as 6 or 6.5% on their mortgages. So for some people, some investors, their mortgage monthly payment has tripled over the last year. And if their rental income has gone up but not gone up enough, it means maybe the rent coming in is less than the mortgage payment. So those people are now in negative cash flow. 
So those investors might be looking at selling and dumping some of those properties, which after all, have had incredible capital growth after the last 12 years. So they might be interested in selling at a bit of a discount, which is good for you if you're looking to buy. So because of the very low interest rates and the low Bank of England rate, that's why so many people have stayed on their variable mortgages. And it's those people who are going to have a problem right now. Now, if you watch my video, uh, if you listen to my Property Magic podcast, probably back in about April, May, I was warning people that interest rates looked like they were going up and people might want to think about getting some advice about should they remortgage their properties and fix those variable rates. I know many of my clients who listened and took action at the time are very pleased they did that because they secured some great rates. Some people who didn't listen or maybe weren't aware of that problem, they stayed on the variable rate, hoping that rates wouldn't go up, but now they now have gone up and now many people are having difficulties with their properties. So we're going to see more and more landlords looking to sell up their properties in the current market, which is not a great time to sell because we've come into a buyer's market where there are more sellers than there are buyers. So that's why prices are coming down. And even though there are people who want to buy property right now, they're having challenges getting mortgages because interest rates are high, the stress tests and the affordability tests are high, which means sometimes people are getting knocked back on their mortgages. So typically we have about one in three property sales in the UK that fall through. Right now, I wouldn't be surprised if it's something like one in two sales are falling through. The 50% of sales that are agreed are falling through those properties coming back onto the market. So for the foreseeable future, I think we're going to see property prices still come down. Are we going to see a property market crash in 2023? I don't think we are, but I don't know. Nobody knows. You see, the government could react. They could do something to stimulate the market, which is exactly what they did back in 2020 when COVID hit. The Bank of England predicted in May 2020 that UK property prices would come down 16%. Now, that didn't happen because the government reacted they bought in the stamp duty holidays. They bought in furlough. So instead of millions of people being made unemployed, they put them to 80% of their pay and got to sit at home. And then also they bought in a bounce back loans to help businesses recover and get going again. Now, that money was not supposed to be used in property, but I think a lot of it was plowed into the property market. That's why we had this unexpected boom over the last two years during the pandemic. But now things are different. 2023, property prices are coming down. Now, many investors are nervous. They're worried. They don't know what's happening. They're going to hold back and wait to see what happens. Personally, I think that's a mistake. This year, 2023, is going to be an incredible buying opportunity. I'm really excited about it, and I hope you are as well. Now, obviously, you need to know what you're doing. You always need to do your due diligence. You need to be careful. But there are some incredible opportunities for those of us who are brave enough to take action. And recognize that this year is probably going to be a bit like 2008 in a way, in that it's going to be an incredible buying opportunity. Many people were trying to sell, dump property. It was difficult to get finance back then. It's not easy right now. It's not as bad as it was back in 2008. It's not the same situation as it was in 2008. But what it means is this massive uncertainty means there's a huge opportunity for you. So I really encourage you to stay plugged in to this YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you get notified when these timely um, videos come out. If you liked it, please press the like uh, and also comment below, ask any questions. I'll come and answer as many of those as I possibly can. So in summary for this property market update for 2023, I think it's an exciting time for those of us who are ready. Most people are not going to be investing. They're going to be waiting. The general public thinks it's a bad time to invest, which means more and more sellers are going to become motivated, which means they're going to sell at a discount or they're going to be flexible and open to creative finance strategies such as purchase lease options, vendor finance or installment contracts. So now is a really good time if you know what you're doing. Um, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, hit the bell icon, and I look forward to sharing with you in the next video. In the meantime, invest with knowledge, invest with skill. I do hope you got massive value from watching this YouTube video. I'd encourage you to click on the link below to come and do the online training with me. And I've got another video lined up for you, which I think is also going to be really useful that you should watch once you've registered for the online training with me. So invest with knowledge, invest with skill. I'll see you very soon.